The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. Bernard Tobin at Serial Smart today, catching up now with Dennis Pennington from Michigan State University. Dennis, how's it going? Very good. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Um, a lot of discussion today, obviously, about wheat, and your topic really was, you know, how do we build that optimum crop canopy sort of to maximize yields? So maybe we'll start there. What does that optimum crop canopy look like? Yeah, so building a crop canopy, it's all about capturing sunlight uh, because, you know, we know that yield comes from photosynthates uh, and the more photosynthates and, and sunlight and CO2 that we can convert into assimilates in the plant, the higher the yield potential. So the question kind of becomes, all right, so how do we develop this crop canopy, no, controlling what we can control with how we plant wheat to develop this system that is the most able to capture the most amount of sunlight as possible and then translate that into uh, yield in, in the plant and then, then for something that we can have to harvest. No, to do that, now you've got to control a lot of variables, everything yes. from row spacing, population, you know, selecting the right variety, and managing tillers. Mm -hmm. So managing tillers is something that I picked up when I traveled to Germany. Um, they are very good at managing tillers over there. Uh, the first five tillers that a wheat plant produces are called primary tillers. Any tiller produced after that is called a secondary tiller, and they don't produce their own root system, only the first five. So their goal is to have a main stem with four tillers or possibly five tillers, and they try to manage the way they build their crop canopy with that goal always in mind to get um, four to five uh, tillers uh, with their plant, and they do that by their row spacing and then how far apart within the row uh, they plant their seed. Now, planting seed and planting technology is going to play such a key role here. Talk about that. I mean, like the drill versus some, a, more of a precision plant approach, a traditional drill, things are changing. Yeah, so if we, we, it, so we have a study at Michigan State University where we're looking at um, a drill compared to some of this newer technology for planting wheat. And one of the things that we're looking at is, is the metering system on, on like an air seeder uh, or even singulation better than the metering system on a, a conventional drill? Um, and are we able to achieve higher yields, get more consistency, more uniformity and emergence growth, and then um, a crop canopy um, at the end of the season? Uh, so we're, what we're looking at is different row spacing, different populations, but we're looking at two different kinds of systems. We're looking at a, a monosome row unit for precision planting, uh, and then uh, a, a conventional John, tier, John Deere uh, drill in, in those systems. So we're looking at um, four different populations um, at uh, four different row spacings for each of them, trying to figure out what is the right combination of those um, to maximize our yield potential. Talk about what you're seeing early. I know you've got a lot of work to do, but from a yield perspective, what are you seeing drill versus precision planting? So the location where we plant this, it's so data intensive that we don't want to plant it. We, we keep it right close to our, our local campus. If we were planting this up in the thumb, um, in kind of the heart of our wheat country in Michigan, um, I would expect even higher yields than what we did. But so to set the stage, the county where we have this planted, the county average yield is 81 bushels um, this last year, okay? which is not a, a bad wheat yield, but it's not any of our record yields by any far. So when we look at the yield of the different row spacings, as you go from wide down to narrow, you're increasing or stepping up uh, your yield potential. And we get all the way down to the five inch row spacing, then we look at our populations. We said we had four populations. At that five inch row spacing, as you go from half a million up to two million, there's a linear increase in the yield um, with the high end at 134 bushel yield. So that 134 bushel compared to the county average of 81, there, there's something to this that uh, we're trying to capture, understand, and learn about why are we seeing this much of a response above what that county, what the yield potential really of that site really is. What about the performance of the machines? Um, you, you talked a lot about singulation. We're getting there, but we've got a lot of work to do. Yeah, so when you try to singulate seed and you're trying to plant two million seeds per acre, trying to make a, a, any machine pick up two million seeds on a per acre basis and drop them uniformly with uniform depth and spacing is very, very difficult. I think what we've learned, the, the biggest benefit from the precision planter is its ability to control the depth. Um, and I think that's where we're getting the most benefit from the, the precision planter above the, just the conventional uh, drill uh, that, we ha that we're planting with. From a farming perspective, uh, what about, I guess, that investment in precision planting and the return on the investment? 
in quite, wheat. Yeah, so quite honestly, the reason we got into this project to begin with is I had a, a couple farmers come to me and say, you know, I need to replace my soybean uh, planter. My drill is old and outdated and run down. Is there any way I can buy one planter that I can plant both those crops? And specifically, they're saying, I want to buy a 15-inch row spacing planter to plant my soybeans. Can I plant wheat? And if I do, what kind of yield response should I expect? So that got this whole thing started about, you know, can we plant with... Uh, a, on, on wider row spacing. Um, and so that's what led us down the road or down the path to get in the, well, maybe we ought to try all these uh, row spacings and populations and try to figure out what's the right combination. Dennis, from what you've seen, um, and looking a couple, maybe a couple years down the road, where might we end up and, and what might precision planting bring to wheat production? So that, that's a really good question, and I, I don't know for sure where it's going to go. It kind of depends on the cost of the equipment. Um, you know, that's certainly one of the biggest things. Um, one of the things that we are doing, we, we do have that horse planter that we're, that we're working with now, and so we're looking at planting wheat as well as soybeans with that one. So if we can find a planter that can plant two crops, be flexible on the row spacing and do a good job with singulation and good job with depth control, there may be a market for uh, farmers to buy a new planter, especially if they can buy one to do two crops. And that, that's really ultimately where it's going to end up being.